Thanks for coming to this demo of Imagination Technologies Catapult Studio. Um, it's actually for any RISC-V CPU, despite what it says in the, in the schedule. So building for RISC-V, what is the problem at the moment? Essentially, it's that RISC-V support in the various tool chains is still very much a bleeding edge feature. If, particularly if you want something like a, a recent feature enhancement, such as the auto vectorization support from the LLVM compiler, uh, you'll often find yourself reaching for a source tree and trying to build it from scratch. Um, that can be difficult, particularly if your host OS is a bit long in the tooth. Um, we've hit recent things like kernel header compatibility problems with builds of QEMU, that kind of stuff. Uh, and even then, the tool chains are still very much rapidly evolving, um, which is great in that all these new extensions require additional support from those tool chains. But it means that as a, a developer coming to Risk Five New, you know, it's quite hard to get all the components to work together sometimes. Building those tool chains and finding out whether they work or not can take several hours on a slow laptop, for example. Um, and there just aren't binary packages available. Uh, those open source upstream projects are there to get code reviews done and, and move the, the projects forward, not to provide binary packages, which would usually come from Linux distros and, and, and the operating systems themselves. Um, so if you reach for your favorite search tool and look around for pre-built tool chains, there are some out there. Um, some are obviously of unknown provenance. There are several now very much vendor focused, uh, perhaps with slightly narrow scope for their particular boards and so on. Uh, and they're often limited to those registered users and customers of, of those uh, RISC-V vendors. Hopefully you'll have heard of RISE, the uh, RISC-V software ecosystem industry collaboration that Imagination Technologies is part of. Uh, one of its primary stated missions is to accelerate the development of open source software for RISC-V. And uh, to give an example, the System Libraries Working Group within RISE aims to fac facilitate literally thousands of projects. Um, so typically libraries might have assembly or intrinsics in their, in their current uh, system supports, and they'll need RISC-V specific equivalents. Uh, similarly, if there's performance critical code that's written in CIMD for something like Neon or SSE, uh, that could need RISC-V vectorization. Uh, and I think fairly early on, this uh, obstacle that RISE identified uh, that there's a lack of general pre-built developer environments out there um, is fairly significant. And they noted that you know, pre-built binaries would lower that barrier for contributors from the wider software ecosystem. You know, people who don't necessarily have a vested RISC-V interest, but nonetheless would like to try and support the new ISA. Uh, it would also help facilitate those uh, the, the software porting before hardware is available. And we've seen that particularly with the Vector extension, uh, version 1.0. There's a bit of uh, hardware trickling out now, but um, it, it, there's always going to be a new extension coming down the pipe from RISC-V uh, from, uh, RISC that doesn't necessarily have a, a hardware implementation at the time you want to build the software for it. Project maintainers as well. You know, All these thousands of projects need a way to test the RISC-V contributions that are coming their way. Um, we can't just take it on trust. Uh, and so there have been a, a couple of example solutions spring to mind. I think Nathan Eggy from Google provided a, a self-hosted QEMU Gen 2 environment with uh, RISC-V um, tool chains built into that um, environment that's then run within a PC host. And I was hearing only earlier and yesterday about uh, AWS F1 FPGA instances that uh, from Open Hardware Group and, and Red Hat that now run Fedora on a CVA 6 core. But again, they're sort of self-hosted uh, in emulated environments, and they're not necessarily super fast. So this is where um, Imagination's Catapult Studio comes in, and particularly the SDK, which uh, we believe is a, a complete RISC-V development environment, and it's uh, freely available to everybody. It's on GitHub. Uh, there are direct links. There's no more registration wall or anything like that. So you can download and unpack the binary straight into your CI pipelines if you need to. Uh, the packages are for multiple operating systems, so Ubuntu, uh, 18.04 LTS and upwards, CentOS, another compatible um, Red Hat Linux distros, uh, Windows also, and Mac OS. And what it contains is a curated, integrated, and fully tested set of cross-compiling components. So this isn't about self-hosting an emulated Linux RISC-V environment. This is about cross-compiling and producing RISC-V binaries. Uh, it contains very recent build of L LLVM and GCC, bin utils, GDB, uh, a number of standard C libraries, so from the, the, the bare bones, lightweight ones, such as PicoLibc, up to the, the more ubiquitous glibc in, in various Linux distros. Uh, there's OpenOCD in there as well. Uh, and I think 
importantly, the message I want to get across here is it's, you know, there are software only RISC V platforms as part of this. So you don't need to have hardware to start doing RISC V development today. Uh, there are imagination CPU models. There's a recent QEMU build in there, which I'll demonstrate in a second. Um, so you don't need to have hardware. If you do have it, we'll support that too. The components are provided through an IDE based on Visual Studio Code, which I'll show you in just one second, which we've called Catapult Studio. As part of that uh, Catapult Studio environment, there's comprehensive documentation, a number of examples from bare metal ones such as Cormark uh, through to RTOS such as FreeRTOS and Zephyr. There's a highly performant LLVM compiler. We have an in-house team dedicated to optimizing the RISC-V capabilities of LLVM. Uh, we're actively upstream, upstreaming those improvements, typically of the order of 30% or more in some benchmarks. Uh, and we've got uh, specific support for RISC-V developers. Can't go through them all here. Uh, I would encourage you to download it and take a look. Uh, but it includes things such as an enhanced disassembly view, uh, graph plotting for those working on DSP type applications, uh, and trace visualization if, if you happen to have um, hardware traces. Uh, the IDE is separate from the tool chains. They're all packaged in a single binary at the moment, uh, but you can run those separately. You don't have to use the, the IDE if, for example, you just wanted to use the binaries in a CI pipeline. So let me just switch to Catapult Studio. Uh, this is the welcome screen. I'll draw your attention, first of all, to the, the documentation that's packaged in there. As I mentioned, a number of examples. Um, description of all the different tool chains that are packaged within here. Uh, and so let's, let's fire up an example. Let's just open, let's open Cormark. Can't quite make it full screen. Uh, so some things to highlight. The platform selected at the moment is a, an Imagination RTX M 2200 CPU model. We're using a GCC uh, kit with um, no standard C libraries in there. And we're doing a debug build with some semi-hosting support so that we can capture the console output. So I believe that's written the build files. If I click build, it compiles core mark, and then I just start switch to the debug page, start the execution. Uh, it stops when it enters main. The other thing I wanted to show is, for example, the disassembly view. So let's open that on the right hand side. And as we step over the commands, you'll see the program counter on the right hand side advancing through the instructions, allows you to inspect the, the, the RISC-V assembly there. Obviously, you can do the usual debugging things. There's a list of local variables in the top left here. Uh, it's a bit squeezed in in this slightly smaller view, but all the registers are also available there. The, CSRs, the GPRs, and floating point ones. Um, if I just let that carry on executing, uh, you'll see it prints out the header, call mark down at the bottom here. Um, it, this model is a, is a behavioral model, fairly high fidelity. It's designed to simulate all the platform specific features of this particular imagination CPU. Because of that, it's not instantaneous to execute this particular call mark. Uh, I'll let that just complete should generate some output. There we go. Um, if, if you were just a, if you wanted to work on the benchmark itself and you weren't targeting Imagination's particular uh, CPU, it would be much quicker to select one of the QEMU um, platforms. So if I switch to a bare metal 32-bit environment, build that again, and rerun it. Stop that one. Execute the next one. Uh, it, it starts up QEMU in full system mode. It's paused, and if I hit go, you see it executes much more quickly. Um, so that's the bare metal example. If I just close that for a second, one other thing I just wanted to quickly demonstrate, if I've got another 30 seconds, is um, imagine, imagine you're an a app developer. You've got a Linux app that you want to try and see if it works on Risk V. Uh, what's the quickest way of doing it? So let's let's open up. Let's say you were, you had a third-party dependency like a JSON parser. There's a open source implementation in C++ of how to pass JSON here. Um, the quickest way, if you're doing iterative development, you know you want to change the code, build it quickly, and execute it, 
is to select something like uh, user mode emulation from QEMU. So this isn't doing full system emulation. Anything that's a syscall or a, a POSIX signal will be handled on the host OS and passed through to the uh, RISC-V emulation. So again, it makes it really quick to execute. Um, if I, in this case, I want to build it with a, a C library, the glibc, so I pick GNU version of the standard C, and then again, let's just build it. Uh, where's the... You'll find here it builds and then it says failed, and that's because um, it's trying to execute a RISC-V executable on my laptop, which isn't a RISC-V laptop. So just a quick example to show how it does work. Uh, quickest thing to do that is edit it. I happen to know there's a thing that prevents it trying to run the unit test as part of the build process. Um, and if I run build this time, it should complete. And then just to finally, you can execute the test executable, the unit test, but via QEMU. And this time, if I let it run to completion, uh, it exits normally. So the message is it doesn't matter whether you're an embedded developer or a full upper stack application developer. There's a tool here today. You can download it and get up and running on RISC-V development without any hardware or anything else. Thank you very much.